Welcome to Climate Briefing's News Roundup for the week ending Friday the 17th of February 2017. Scott Pruitt has been confirmed as President Donald Trump's choice to head the US Environmental Protection Agency. Mr Pruitt has, in the past, been a fierce critic of the agency, suing it over a dozen times. Opponents to his nomination say he is a climate change denier with close ties to the fossil fuel industry. Mr Pruitt has refused to reveal thousands of email exchanges with oil and gas executives, but he has been ordered by a state judge to release the emails by next Tuesday, the 21st of February. Also in the States this week, a federal judge has rejected a call by Native American tribes to halt the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline, which is due to extend for over 1,800 kilometres. Two days later, Pope Francis appeared to back their campaign, saying that indigenous cultures should have the right to defend their ancestral relationship with the earth. An application has been made to route the $8 billion Keystone XL pipeline through the US state of Nebraska. The former president, Barack Obama, had blocked the project over environmental concerns. But President Trump has recently reversed that decision, giving the project a federal green light. In advance of July's G20 summit in Hamburg, investment and insurance companies who manage more than $2.8 trillion of assets are urging the G20 nations to phase out fossil fuel subsidies by the year 2020. Bush fires continue to burn across New South Wales in Australia. On Friday, there were still 87 fires burning across the state, 66 of them still unconfined. Earlier, the emergency services warned against potentially catastrophic fire conditions because a sweltering heat wave is sweeping across the country's east coast. A state of emergency has been declared in the city of Christchurch, New Zealand. Hundreds of people have been evacuated from their homes as wildfires fuelled by humidity and strong winds have spread. A helicopter pilot has also died in a crash while fighting the blaze. Having made landfall in Mozambique, tropical storm Dineo has killed seven people and destroyed 20,000 homes. Winds reached 160 kilometres per hour and there are fears of further flooding because last year's major drought has left the soil less capable of absorbing water. The UN's World Meteorological Organisation has reported that the extent of sea ice in the Arctic and Antarctic reached a record low for January down by 260,000 square kilometres compared to January last year. A new study says that rain is likely to replace snowfall across the Alps due to global warming. The report estimates that ski resorts in the region could lose up to 70% of their snow cover by the end of the century. In Beijing, the government has banned high emission vehicles to combat air pollution. Orders to reduce emissions have also been imposed on 20 other Chinese cities, which adversely affect Beijing as their airborne pollutants are blown north across the country. A Chinese-backed power station being planned for construction in Bosnia has been warned by the EU that it must meet emission reduction rules. Environmentalists have alleged that the 350-megawatt coal-fired power plant has so far failed to specify any pollution limits. The UK has received a final warning from the European Commission over breaches of air pollution levels. Limits have been exceeded repeatedly in 16 areas including London, Leeds and Glasgow. If no action is taken within two months, the UK could face fines of millions of pounds or be taken to the European Court of Justice. In an effort to improve London's air quality, the city's mayor, Sadiq Khan, is introducing a new vehicle pollution tax. A daily tax of £10 will be applied to certain higher polluting diesel and petrol vehicles entering central London. The mayor has said in a statement, It is staggering that we live in a city where the air is so toxic that many of our children are growing up with lung problems. On Monday, the EU approved a German plan to build an electric vehicle charging network across the country. The network, which will cost an estimated 300 million euros, will be implemented over four years and requires its energy to come from renewable sources. Also in Europe, the Swedish bank SEB has raised 500 million euros by issuing its first green bond. 
The funds will be used to make loans to projects related to renewable energy, energy efficiency and low carbon transport. A paper published in the international journal Nature has suggested that due to climate change, oxygen levels in the ocean dropped by more than 2% between 1960 and 2010. Reduced oxygen levels can create uninhabitable dead zones for some marine creatures, leaving them with fewer areas to live in. This has been a Climate Briefing Weekly Roundup. Details of these and other stories can be found at climatebriefing.org.